You are in the temple of the rants in which I rant about whatever my $15 a month plus patrons want me to rant about. You can get one of these by being one of those. This one's for Rila, who says, Rant about PCP HQ and its current likelihood of, likelihood of happening. So I'm just going to like go all the way back and explain what this is for people who've maybe heard me drop this phrase over the years and don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. So uh, as you may know, I, was, uh, I got my start as a full-time YouTuber with a channel called Digibrony because I was a My Little Pony anim analyst. And that channel eventually became Digibro. Um, and, you know, history goes on from there. I, I switched back to anime, which I've been writing about before I was doing it for money. So in my time in that community, I made friends with certain people who I respected as content creators and who respected me. It was sort of built out of our mutual admiration for one another's content, those being... Endless Jess, uh, Give and Take, a.k.a. Hypocrite, um, Best Guy Ever, who at the time was Keg Standard, and Ben Saint, who at the time was Phantom Horn, and Tom Oliver, who at the time was Brony Curious. These were my group of friends. We all hung out and talked and did collaborations together. And when we all eventually broke away from doing My Little Pony content... We basically wanted an excuse to continue working together. We had this Skype group, which had been started by Mage and Ben, um, who were friends, and Mage is another My Little Pony uh, reviewer who you know wasn't as active as the rest of us, but she was also an artist, and her and Ben had, I think, bonded over that. And they just threw together this chat and put everybody in it, and we would all hang out and talk, and we were, you know, we became closer and closer friends. We met at BronyCon a couple times, and we wanted to be able to work together because basically the way I saw it, these were the most interesting, talented people that I knew. It was like, these are good connections. And like, you know, I had a lot of offline friends who I also thought were talented, but none of them was really interested in working with me. They weren't really interested in collaborating. And most of the people online who were interested in collaborating with me, I just didn't really like the things they were doing. And it's hard for me to work with somebody if I don't, you know, like their shit. So because we all liked each other's shit, it was like, man, how awesome would it be if we all lived in the same area? If we were able to, you know, to to have a production group kind of like Red Letter Media or Loading Ready Run, you know, these, these groups where like seven or eight people can do skits together and make sets and, you know, basically have like a joined studio space where we all did our stuff and then we could, you know, work on our individual projects as well as work together all in this shared space. Um, but the only way this could happen is if we all lived in the same area. And at the time, we were all living in completely different cities. So it was like, you know, the only way this could happen is if everybody was making enough money off of their creativity that they could go in on this, you know. And at, uh, basically... Everybody has had a Patreon, some success on the internet, but most of those guys were not at a level where they could completely support themselves off of their art or were just not able to move, you know, not, not making enough money that they could just go wherever they wanted to go and just, like, you know, leave their life behind, essentially, the way that I've been able to do uh, several times. So, you know, we, we started having this idea, like, wouldn't it be cool? That was the main thing. Like, wouldn't it be cool? And after meeting at BronyCon a few times, I had had this idea of like, hey, I only come here to hang out with you guys. And when we're here, we can't really work on anything because we're doing the con. We're usually surrounded by like a lot of fans and other people who want to hang out with us. I want an excuse to just hang out with you guys. So we did RadCon. And the idea was that it was a, a conference that was happening at my house. And we all flew in, we did this thing, and it was very clear to me that if we all got into one place, we could do bigger, more interesting projects than what we could do on our own. You know, we had a set built, we made up like new styles of content that just we couldn't do by ourselves, and um, a lot of what came out of it was just like a ton, not only a ton of fun to make, but like just content that seemed like if we could polish this, if we could make it even better, you know, if we didn't just have, like, a slapdash set built right before the thing and, like, no time to prepare because we are all, you know, like, what, what are we going to build a bunch of shit that we have to take with us, you know, on these flights? It's like, if we had this thing set up, it would work. We would be able to make great content together. 
And it was really inspiring for me, and I'm somebody who's wanted to work with other people just because I, I feel like it's a way I could escalate things. And I had struggled a lot with, you know, when I was working by myself with things like not having good lighting, not having, like, a permanent setup, not having a cameraman who could just, like, make sure that there's a focus racked on my face. And for a, a long time in my career, on YouTube, quality used to matter a lot more. I mean, if you've never seen my video, We Have Accepted Mediocrity, I talk about how, like, there was a time when uh, if a video was going to be more than 10 minutes long, it was expected to be, like, really high quality and engaging and keep you watching. Nowadays, because people just watch YouTube like it's TV, you have stuff like The Rant Hole, which is recorded on a, a Sony, uh, what is this, an X100 or whatever? It says Zeiss on it? I think that's just the name of the body of the camera. But, like, you know, it's just a vlogging camera. So, like, th this is the kind of thing that, that, like, that is good enough now. And it wasn't like that before. So we were of this mindset of, like, if we really want to take things to the next level, if we want to be as big as we can be, we need to make higher quality content than what we are capable of doing at, on our own at the speed that we can do it on our own, you know? Um, so... Yeah, like, it was it was just something that everybody thought would be a neat idea. Well, then, I started trying to make it happen, and, um, you know, at one point I had Ben and Davu move in with me, but the three of us all kind of, they weren't really the people who I needed to make the things I wanted to happen happen. Like, the main thing about PCPHQ for me is that I think it, what would be it is if me and Nate lived in the same place, because... Nobody else in the PCP is necessarily dedicated to the idea of being a full-time YouTuber as a career, as, like, where their money comes from. Like, Tom, who lived with me for the last year, and we did a lot of projects together, like, uh, mostly involving streaming, like, Tom used to be a YouTuber, and he stopped doing it because he hated it. And he started becoming a game developer, and does 3D art, and, like... So the idea of him and I, like, making a YouTube show together that we're going to, like, dedicate all of our time to and try to make a lot of money out of, it just doesn't really make sense with what he's trying to do with his career, what he's actually passionate about when he has openly said, I don't want to be a YouTuber, you know? Um, Endless Jess has been trying to get away from YouTube for a long time. Hypocrite has, uh, you know, sort of put YouTube behind him as a just, you know, something he's doing as a side thing for fun and not trying to take seriously anymore. Um, ben is primarily a comic artist. You know, he's only really involved with YouTube insofar as his collaborations with other people in the group. Munchie, similarly. Munchie works on all kinds of random art shit. He's more of a community guy. He's more about, like, you know, making connections and friends on the internet than he is necessarily about, like, trying to make for-profit art. And, uh, you know, he's been very open about the fact that he's not really interested in being a YouTuber. So, like, um, you know, me and Nate are the only people who are like, I want to do this as a job and put a lot of work into it and make as much money as possible. And if that means, like, you know, um, talking about current and relevant stuff and making highly edited videos and, like, going maybe even a step beyond what I necessarily want to do, I'm willing to do that because this is the job I want to have, you know? And so the way I see it, if him and I got into the same place, that is PCPHQ because I know we would work on something together reliably, you know? Um, whereas everybody else is going to have their own things kind of going on. So this was... Basically, when we moved to Boston, it seemed like it was going to happen because everybody was kind of converging there. Munchie was guaranteed moving there. Uh, ben was already living there again, uh, or he moved up not long after we moved in. Um, you know, me and May moved there, and Nate was planning to come. He might still be planning to come later this year. So it was like, this is the thing. This is going to be, me and Nate are going to be in the same place. We're going to establish a show. Everybody else can basically be as involved as they want. Oh, and of course, Tom was living with us. So he, he would have been there too. And, um, but ultimately, moving to Boston was just such a costly thing for me. Like, it was so, it was so expensive to live there. It was so, um, like, the house situation sucked. I was never able to really do any of the things that I had envisioned when I first got there. Like, um, you know, it, it basically just put me in the hole. And so the only way I saw to get out of it was to leave. And I didn't like living there. Like, I don't like Boston. I don't like 
it being cold for half the year and humid for the other half of the year. I don't like, uh, uh, you know, not being able to use your car really to get around, like having to rely on public transit and then living, living, having to live far out of the city if you want to have a standalone house and, you know, not wanting to live in the city because I want to have a standalone house. It's just like everything about the way I wanted to live my life doesn't really work with Boston and I'm also bleeding all this money, and, like, PCPHQ is a cool idea. It's, like, something I want to do because it sounds good on paper. Yeah, me and Nate and our friends doing a thing to become bigger, better YouTubers, but it's still a risk. It's still, like, just a thing that we think will work, you know? There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee that we will find a project that really gels with us or with an audience that we'll be able to get a good enough studio space that it will really be any better than what we could be doing by using all of our time on our own. You know, it's just kind of a nice idea. And while I do still want it to happen, I would still love for it to happen, um, you know, it really just depends on whether or not Nate wants to move down where I am or if anybody else wants to come down here. You know, if, if other people are... It seems like other than him... Everybody else has expressed that, like, they would like to be involved, but they are not interested in dedicating themselves to that as a central pillar of their content. And that's what it would have to be for it to be what I want it to be, you know, for it to be the thing that is PCPHQ. So if it can only happen if me and Nate are in the same place, then whether or not it happens just depends on that. And uh, obviously I could have kept it in the realm of possibility by staying in Boston you know, if Nate had come there and I had already been there, it would have been great. But, like, I had just put myself so far in the hole moving there and was so sort of disillusioned with it and just didn't want to be there anymore that getting out was more important to me. If that means PCPHQ uh, can't happen for another year or another two years or never happens, that's fine. You know, uh, it, it's, again, it's just, like, an idea that is good. It's not necessarily, like, the plan for my life or anything like that. Um, but, you know, if Nate does move down here, PCPHQ is happening. If it, if he doesn't, who knows? It's still up in the air, you know, but it's, it's just that, you know, again, the reason I want it to happen is that those guys are still the people who I feel the most connected with. You know, they're the people who I'm the closest friends with, who I've worked with the most, who I trust to work with, who I think have similar tastes and interests and like that we can do good things together, that we have similar like aesthetic interests and stuff like that. But, um, you know, if, if everybody's working on their own things, that's just the way it is. And, uh, there's nobody else that I've like picked up along the way. It's not like I've made a new group of friends or like found other people I want to work with more. So, like, I'm still in the mindset that, like, if I'm going to work with other people, these are the people I want to work with, you know. Um, though I have been, you know, uh, just becoming a character on other people's shows and stuff, not in any capacity that makes me money, but, like, you know, it's not that I don't have any other connections, just that, you know, those are the people I'd want to do, like, a full thing with. Anyway, that's enough about that.